the 256 golfers who descended on Gullin No. 1 for this year's Allied Severe Scottish Amateur Championship not only found a course in stunning condition, but one which was considerably longer than when the competition was last played here in 2004. The first man stepping nervously onto the first tee this year was Craig Dearness. Unfortunately, it wasn't to be Craig's day, and he was beaten by Aaron Howard from Glenairn. Local boy Grant Forrest had won the boys' match play championship in West Kilbride earlier in the year, and the double was done last year by David Law, and Grant had a lot to live up to, as well as a tough opponent in the form of Anthony News from Murker. This Anthony's approach shot at a par 4 sixth. However, despite some nice play by Anthony, Grant came through the tie five and four. I played, I played pretty solid and I just hung on in there and just got, got the job done today. And how's life as Scottish boys champion? Quite a bit to live up to, obviously, of people hyping you up, especially last week with the stroke play as well, but and it just it didn't happen. But ah, it's really good to get, to get known as a Scottish boys champion, I suppose, yeah. Ian Redford had finished runner-up to Grant down in West Kilbride on a day where he just couldn't get his putting going. Here at Gullano, he seemed to have sorted that problem, and both Grant and Ian made it through to round three before being beaten. Grant losing to Keith Hamilton from Air Isle and Colin Baird from Bothwell, beating Ian. Also flying the flag for the youngsters this year, Eldersley's 15-year-old Alistair McDougall, here playing in his fourth round tie against Nicky Gold. He had to sink that putt in the 18th to force the game into a playoff. Holding his nerve in front of the growing crowd and against the rather more senior figure of Gold from Bonneton, Alistair stepped up again on the first, the 19th hole, and knocked a lovely drive right down the middle, along with a few words of encouragement from James Byrne and Alan Dick there, the match moved on down towards the green. Perhaps showing the first sign of nerves, young McDougall played his second shot through the green and left himself this putt for a par four, which he had to hold once again to keep the match alive. Fantastic composure again from the youngster. But unfortunately, it was too little too late as up stepped Nicky Gold to roll in his putt for a nice birdie three to progress through into round five, where unfortunately for him, he was to be defeated by Jordan McCall of Scotts Craig. Fraser Burr's Chris Nicholl is a man who has performed consistently well over the last couple of years, catching the eye of the international selectors something he was looking to do again this week at Gullin. He didn't have to look far. His opening opponent was Wilson Bryson, a man who's part of the International Selection Committee and who was looking to have a good week himself here at Gullin. Chris can only hope that he doesn't take this kind of thing personally. Here at the par 4 7th, all the way down the hill, Chris through the green decides to roll this one in for a birdie three to take the hole. And as far as selection goes from now on, well, it's going to be a real test of Wilson's impartiality. Chris took the tie five and four before eventually being beaten in the third round by Royal Troon's Paul Moultrie. Fellow internationalist Greg Patterson has a very good record in recent years in this event and was once again looking forward to this week's tournament. I enjoy match play. Um, you know, it's not often we get to play it. Um, throughout the year, it's usually stroke play. Um, so whenever you get a chance to play match play, it's always, it's always a nice change. Performance and results have improved perhaps recently for Greg, and he's the first man to give credit to others that have helped him on his way. SU do a, do a great job, um, obviously with Aberdeen Asset and, and Sports Scotland as well, you know, they, they help out a great deal. Obviously, we were in South Africa at the start of the year um, you know, for 10 days warm weather training, which was, which was a tremendous opportunity. and it was. It was, uh, it was really good for me. We got a lot of work done, obviously, so that, that was a big advantage. And the work very nearly paid off early in the season for Greg as he led going into the last round of the Welsh Open. He eventually finished third and was disappointed with the result, but what did he take from the week? It was just nice to be able to, to know you can compete um, in a tournament like that and you know, you know, kind of hold your own and you know, obviously have a chance of winning it going into the last round. Obviously, um, in the last round didn't go didn't go according to plan or didn't go how I'd, how, I'd, how I'd liked it to go, but 
you know, just got to put that, put that down to experience. You know, I haven't, well, I haven't been in that situation all that much. Um, so I guess the more you do it, then the more you learn how to how to handle it. But I'll know, I'll know, I'll know better for next time. Greg made it through to the last 16 at Gullen before being beaten by this man, Michael Smith of Royal Troon, who made a name for himself last year by beating this man. Number one seed and runner-up in the British Amateur at Muirfield down the road just a few weeks ago, James Byrne was cautious about his prospects this week. He may be the number one seed, but his record in the Scottish Amateur is not good. I don't like to look too far ahead in this tournament, you know, I want to win it, but... Uh... You know, in terms of uh, my progression through the tournament, it's just going to be just going to be one round at a time. Um, I was seeded last year and, and went out. And in fact, there's four or five seeds went out first round. So uh, it's safe to say the seeding in this tournament is not really that important. You know, anybody can can beat you on a given day. Indeed, match play can throw up some surprises, but it was going to take something special to beat Burn this week. This his tee shot in his last 16 match here at the first over 300 yards onto the green before rolling in a putt for an eagle too. It was the match of the round, which Byrne won narrowly on the last, beating the inform Alan Dick to progress, all the way to the semi-finals, where indeed it was another magnificent performance, but just not enough to get him into the final. Another man carrying the weight of expectation this week, last year's champion, David Law. We caught up with David to see how his year has been since winning the title in Royal Troon 12 months ago. Uh, the last 12 months have been a wee bit, a wee bit frustrating. Uh, I've had a couple of injuries and uh, you know when you're injured like that it's hard to get any momentum going and uh, you know I feel I feel like I'm a better player you know this time round than I was last year. Um, you know I just need to get need to get a wee run of tournaments going and, and a bit of form under my belt I think. Law had a good run over the week making a spirited defence of his title before eventually losing out to this man here, Liam Johnson, in the last 16. Jordan Finlay from Fraserburgh was a golfer whose form had dipped over the last few years since winning the British Boys title back in 2004. But with the help of coach Bob Torrance, he has shown a recent remarkable turnaround in form. Indeed, he shot a 66 on Friday afternoon to beat number one seed James Byrne, which included two birdies at the last two holes to close out the victory, and book his place in Saturday's 36 hole final. His opponent was Troon Welbeck's Michael Stewart, a man who himself had shown some remarkable form in the week running up to the final. Like this bunker shot here on the seventh, and his last 16 tie against Jamie Mackay. And early on on Saturday morning, indeed on the first green here, it looked as if both players were going to carry on their hot form into the final. Jordan Finlay rolling in a putt for a birdie three to go one up. The final was played in a very relaxed atmosphere between these two. They know each other well, having been teammates for the Scottish boys team and also for East Tennessee State University. This perhaps brought the best out in their game in tough conditions. Findlay here nearly holding his second, the approach at the 17th, and Michael Stewart with this putt for a birdie three on 18 to go four up at the halfway stage. Findlay fought back quickly though, after lunch, winning the first and second, meaning that Stewart was only two up. But the lead was never less than that, and indeed, here on the par 5 12th, the 30th hole of the day, Stewart rolled in this eagle three putt to go back to four up. Findlay's head didn't go down though, and on the very next tee, the par 3 13th, he knocked up this impressive tee shot to fight right back, holding the putt for a two and making the deficit three. But despite being diagnosed with the shingles just a week ago, Michael Stewart was a man who is at the very top of his game. Three up with three to play, this was his tee shot at the 16th by now attracting golfers from the other two courses at Gullen into joining the spectators, Stuart knew that he had a downhill putt of about six feet to take the title and win the Allied Surveyor Scottish Amateur Championship 2010. A fantastic victory against a good friend and worthy opponent, magnanimous in defeat. 
he played really good golf. You know, it's I played well, he played well, and uh, he just just got a few more putts than I did. And despite the defeat in the final, still positive about his current form and his prospect. I've been good pretty much since May this year. Um, I felt like I was good before. I was playing well before then. It wasn't quite happening, but it's it's starting to come together now. And uh, I think this week should propel me forward even more. And indeed, off the back of his performance, Findlay has now been called up to the senior squad for Scotland for the first time in his career. But what about his teammate? How does it feel to win the title? It feels unbelievable, to be honest. I don't, it hasn't really sunk in yet what's actually just happened, but it's feeling pretty special. It's a special win. A special win, but certainly not an easy one. Jordan never gave me a hole all day. He made me win holes and, and I made him win holes, so it was a, it was a great final. Jordan and I have been good friends for a number of years now, so there wasn't any tension between us or anything like that. So it was just a, it was a nice game to play in and uh, a nice game to be a part of, to be honest. It's always nice to finish on a, on a birdie. Just uh, having a putt to win is always special. So congratulations to Michael Stewart, 2010 Ally Severe Scottish Amateur Champion.